Well, well, well. It seems like everybody's still around, and it seems like a lot of you guys are enjoying the Wax mini series, which I'm super happy and super stoked about. So welcome to the new subscribers and welcome back my fellow finance nerds for another episode in the Wax mini series. Now last week we had a look at Appen, which I was thoroughly surprised about, you know, how it collects its data set and how it's helping big tech companies and even smaller e-commerce companies build out those platforms and help increase the user experience by providing their relevant service. Now the one criticism I did have for them was that I would have liked it to be more specific in the report in regards to the client they had, what exactly the data was being used for. Now I understand that they probably can't disclose all of that, um, there's probably some NDAs and whatnot that were being signed. But without all that information, it definitely does make it harder to gauge where the projections are in the future. Anyways, regardless, this week we've got another banger, another potential beast in the ASX that's already, you know, boasted large profits and has very, very, very good clientele at the moment already and is quite established internationally. That is the one, the only, it's in the title itself, Altium. So just like Appen, I think this one has a lot of potential for growth just because it also has many similar metrics to Appen in terms of the solutions they provide and the partnerships it already has secured. Now before I go into the video, this company is probably the most complex company out of the lot that I had to go through in terms of research and comprehending it, understanding it and putting it down in I guess layman's term to make sure this video actually makes sense. And I know I haven't even finished the series but I, I just know, like this video took me so long to put together and you'll understand why as I go through. So all I ask is that you kindly tap the like button before we get into this video because I guarantee you're gonna get a lot of value out of it and even for shareholders of Altium, you might learn something, I might learn something. If I've missed anything, please leave it in the comments down below. Comment also down below anything. It helps the YouTube algorithm regardless. Just give me an emoji, your first emoji that shows up. All right, let's get into it. So Altium is a company that provides PC-based electronics design software for designers and engineers to create and design printed circuit boards or PCBs. Now I'm by no means a PCB builder or a circuit board designer or anything, but I did try to spend probably about an hour trying to figure out how it all works um, and watching people actually slowly start to build the boards, tutorials in the Altium program and uh... Okay, look, I'm not going to pretend I know how the whole process works. I'm just going to look at the business models and what products and services they've launched. So at this point, they have four main offerings, Altium Designer, Altium Nexus, Tasking, and Octopart, and their free service, Circuit Maker. Now, all these services are quite complex, so I won't go into it into that much detail. But if we do have some designers or engineers or just some IT savvy people who know more about this stuff, please leave it in the comments below so we can help our fellow viewers. So one of their smaller offerings is Altium Nexus. It's basically one of their smaller platforms predominantly for enterprises, so co-workers can collaborate on a project smoothly. Now, that offering is quite specifically tailored to the customer's needs and requires a lot of buy-in and time and all that stuff, which is why it also forms such a small portion of their revenue. Now their next offering is Altium Tasking, based in Germany, where it's creating software to assist the creation of chipsets for automotive industries, so that developers can create graphics, put in Wi-Fi, and all the other middleware which creates the experience between the user and the function of the car. Which if you think about it, makes sense given the fact that it's in Germany. Now this is a growing opportunity seeing markets such as China and India expand in the use of its service, so watch this space. I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla is also tapping into this given they are a client of Altium, much like Audi, and also a lot of other car manufacturers. So yeah, Altium also covers the automotive space. The next part of their offering is Octopart, which is headed by Chris Calvi. And in an interview in January 2020, they said that they have about 800 to 900,000 users per month on the free program. Now, because it's free, you might ask, how exactly does it make any money? Well, it actually makes money through partnering with distributors who pay a fee to participate in the program because that's well where all the traffic of consumers looking to purchase their parts are from. Think of it like a retailer paying for Afterpay or a restaurant paying Uber to participate on their platform. But the program also ensures that designers are sourcing parts from authorized distributors who have a relationship with the manufacturers and not some kind of knockoff which reduces the part's life expectancy. Apparently, which was really important and I seriously had no idea about. With Octopart, another concern they are working towards solving is ensuring that the parts meet government requirements when entering into certain countries because there are strict regulations 
these parts and chemicals within there have to adhere to. It's not like just ordering any piece of tech, like a drone or something, and expecting it to arrive through Australia Post. But to basically sum up, what I got from Chris is that they want to be the Wikipedia and Google for electronic parts and dominate that market. And to do so, they're going to need to first solve issues and have a library of information so that people can refer to as a search engine and transact in the same place. So just think about anything that you might want to search for or order, like let's say um, AirPods or something like that, right? You go to Google, you type in AirPods, lowest price maybe or something like that, and it'll come up with you know the price offerings um, generally on the ads at the top or just on the side. And so Octopart essentially wants to become that. And in terms of Wikipedia, it just wants to have all the definitions and understanding on a very basic level that Wikipedia provides, you know, which is controversial within itself because well, fake news, but for electronic parts. So if you want to look up for, you know, this connects with this or this matches that, oh, that's what that part does, then it's all on Octopart. All right, so those were the smaller branches of the company and you can see what they do and already that seems pretty good to me. But we're not even touching their main product, which is Altium Designer. Now there are many aspects to this product which I'm not gonna be able to cover. So I'm just gonna cover a few of the main functions. The first main function of Altium Designer is the schematic capture, which is a step in the design process in which a electronic diagram or schematic of the circuit is created. This is obviously essential to the design part because well, without it, you really just don't have a design. Like you need to draw it and make it all happen. The next part of what makes the program stand out from the rest is the ability to see the design or the product in a 3D perspective of the PCB design. Now I was watching a few videos from designers who said that they really appreciated this aspect of the program because it allowed them to see if there'd be some physical issues before going into production and seeking out a manufacturer. Another function which is apparently very important is called FPGA development. Now that stands for the Field Programmable Gate Array, which basically allows chips to be programmable to different functions. This form of development is used in many aspects of computing, which which also goes into things from vehicles to home appliances. Now have a Google about this. I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna pretend to know that I understood this. This part actually took me 20 minutes just to even understand what the heck that abbreviation was and on a very basic level, what that does for a chip. The last main function of designer is the data management. In particular, it's cloud computing and sourcing of components and accessing manufacturing data. Now I know that was quite content dense, but essentially that's all the services that they offer. But there's one more service that ties it all together, which is Altium 365, which essentially makes the whole process cloud-based and works towards having Altium as the one-stop shop. And what I like about Altium in reading all their reports and watching a lot of the interviews and videos is that they're really trying to solve an issue for designers and engineers who are creating solutions for issues or inefficiencies we're facing now. What they're doing with this platform is bringing idle manufacturers to produce circuit boards for designers, which means that it can be done for a low cost and in a low stress manner. This solution has great productivity outcome and benefits all parties in the manufacturers having something to make as they're just idle at the moment with the efficiency that the designer requires. Whew. All right, everybody's still here. I know that was quite operational heavy and I hope you guys got a lot of value out of that. Remember, hit that like button. But yeah, let's head into the numbers right now so we can actually understand what's going on on the back end. So just looking at the results, the company's growth is massive. We're talking of growth in the double digits. This is all in USD, so just be mindful that it's more than what the figures would show because we're in Australia. But we're looking at $172 million in revenue and an after-tax profit of $52.8 million. Now what's important to note here is that their margin has grown as their revenue has grown, which might mean that they're starting to see the economy of scale in effect and I only imagine that this is going to increase as they get more subscribers to their service because they already have the platform and should be investing in more R&D, which makes things a bit more efficient. And also hopefully allows them to raise their price in subscription year over year. Now when we look at the source of revenue, it's clear that Altium Designer is the largest source of revenue, coming in at just over $100 million. And what I also like is that their balance sheet is also looking really, really, really good with about $80 million in cash, even though they paid out $15 million in dividends, which like, why? Like for me, I, I don't understand. Just keep it in there for growth, use it for marketing, some more R&D, all that type of stuff. I don't think for such a big growth engine that they should be paying out dividends. It's not that I'm against dividends. It's just given this type of company and the type of growth metrics it has. Yeah, I'd rather it just keep its capital in case, you know, something like this happens in the worst case scenario. So then you're well capitalized on the back end to do whatever you need. I mean, but if you're a bank, then yeah, I'm happy to cash in those dividend checks. No worries. The debt is also rather low at $12 million and the director has made it clear that the company can pay any debt when they are due. So the balance sheet here, 
is not a concern for me. It's actually a strength for this company. So the numbers look good and there's lots of growth. But what does concern me is that one of their biggest growth areas is China, which is going through some stuff with the Rony Rona. And we don't know when they'll open up again. It's recently come out that the company has also understandably withdrew its guidance and mentioned that they may lower price of subscription depending on when things pick back up. But in these given circumstances, they're also likely to lose subscribers. Now you can look at this in a couple of ways, but how I see it is that as long as they can stay relevant, which I can see shouldn't be an issue, and there continues to be a need for circuit boards to be built, which of course, everybody's at home now, people are going to look for cheaper alternatives in computing. But I wonder how the manufacturing process is being affected with many plants being shut down in different parts of the world, which actually leads me to some of the risks that the company's outlined itself. So in terms of risk, they've outlined four main risks they face in the operation of this business and the word risk shouldn't be taken in a bad way. I want to make clear. Our team is basically just covering its exposure of which I'll summarize. So first is that obviously they need to execute on everything and deliver on the promises to make the platform an all-in-one which is no easy task. When you've got to obtain so much information to ensure you become the Wikipedia and also the logistics and the design of the PCBs, it's a lot of work. Which leads on to the second risk, which is being sure that they can comply with regulations from different countries they work in and the travel components have to go through from different countries and making sure it all meets border clearance requirements and that Altium has kept up with their accounting requirements in those different countries. Third is in the nature of their work in having all this information and projects saved in the cloud and is making sure that it's all safe from cyber threat. And last is making sure they attract and keep the right people and incentivize them to ensure the vision of the company is met. So what they'll need to do is introduce different retention programs, which might cost some more money to do that. Now my thoughts surrounding that is, yeah, sure, absolutely. You're gonna need key personnel and we've seen companies like Afterpay, Facebook allocate very good money to get very good people and they've grown quite drastically. So just pay less dividends and your balance sheet should be sweet. Now I must say, I'm rather impressed by this Australian IT company. And what I think many Australian investors don't know is that Australia is quite up there in terms of tech, except all our engineers and scientists go international where there's more money and larger markets, which is why it looks like we're so far behind in comparison to other countries. But there is some serious talent in this country in terms of IT. And in saying that, there also are a lot more crappy IT businesses and companies also. Now in terms of performance of share price, it's done very well. And it seems like the market sees promise in the company also because it stayed quite up there above the 30s. Yeah, so for me, another beast in the ASX wax series and again thank goodness i'm doing afterpay next week so then it's just a lot less research because well i've already done a fair few videos on that uh, company itself and i've made trades on the company also but anyways guys that's all from me i hope you guys got a lot of value and enjoyed the video i'll catch you guys next time cheers